Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to another episode of The Trainer Talk. Today is episode 50, so coming up on one year. Today we're going to be talking about things that we started out doing on our fitness journey, both in exercise and nutrition, and kind of what we've learned over the years, what we've changed. Um, some things that we thought were maybe the right things to do or what we focused all our attention on now maybe aren't the right things or we found out, we've learned new ways, things like that. So we want to go over our journey. Um, we'll kind of go one at a time through our fitness and nutrition and kind of talk about what we thought was working and what we thought was right and compared to now what we think is right or maybe what we do. So we'll start out with one of these two, one of these three. And they'll talk about kind of their fitness journey and we'll just kind of go uh, back and forth. Yeah, so like with the fitness part, uh, I was introduced to weightlifting as part of like strength training for wintertime off season uh, for my softball in high school. That started 10th grade, um, did that through senior year. Um, I did a little bit more heavily, heavily my senior year because I just I wanted to get stronger and really dedicate more time to it to being the best I could for my last year of that season. Um, and then I continued, once I went to college, I took a weight training class and, you know, learned a little bit more there and then started working out, you know, three to four days a week fairly consistently. Um, that was 2019 and then 2020, COVID happened uh, and then ended up building a squat rack out of two by fours in my parents' basement and so I could continue working out there, had like the weights and everything. So. Uh, it was really important for me to continue working out through that time just because, I mean, a lot of people didn't and I was like, you know what, I'm going to stick to some sort of routine, it made me feel good. Um, but something that I used to do that I definitely don't do anymore is I never went over eight reps of anything, maybe 12, but usually it was eight because I would be like, ah, I just get bored if it's over eight reps and I just wanted to go heavier rather than like do higher reps. Um, and I didn't want to do that. Um, and now uh, we just did uh, over 100 reps of certain exercises. And uh, I mean, I'm not saying that I like it any more than that, but I do it now, so that's different. Um, I also didn't do cardio. I do that now uh, quite a bit. And then didn't squat below parallel until I, I actually had the goal of competing in powerlifting. And I read the standards and it was like, oh, you have to squat below parallel. So then I started squatting below parallel and it like halved my max in half and I was like it took a big ego hit I'm not gonna lie where it's like I'm putting like 25s on each side of the bar when it used to be 45s was my warm up and I'm like mm. it, was, it was it was it was kind of a hard hit for a while but then like you obviously build back that strength like going that low so you just kind of I knew that over time it would pay off and it did and I thought that was kind of cool um, and then I also never trained arms when I like started because I didn't want to get bulky. Like I want to train more legs and get bigger legs, but uh, I didn't really focus on my arms because I didn't, I didn't want to have a bigger upper body. Uh, now I really like to train arms. I like bench, I like curls. I want to get better looking arms. It's just funny how things change like that. And I also know that I'm not going to get like super jacked. Uh, I'm just gonna look better. And if you do work out your arms, like you're gonna have like defined shoulders and it's just, you're not gonna look like super well here. Like Common that. misunderstanding is yeah. the girls, especially, think that if they do arms or lift heavy, they're gonna get big and jacked. And yeah. the reality is, is you really won't. You will just build lean muscle and look more toned. So when people say, Oz talks about a lot. People that want to be toned, they're talking about building lean muscle. Um, that's what they're trying to do. And it's hard enough for us guys. I mean, we lift heavy all the time. And some guys still don't get very big, and we have 10 times the amount of testosterone. So um, don't worry about it if you are a lady that is worried about lifting heavy. Um, hopefully you won't get as big as, as me or Austin. Maybe, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. yeah it's, it's just kind of funny, like the misconceptions of how fast you think it's going to go. Of like, once I start doing heavy squats, like my legs are going to look like a power lifter who's been lifting for 10 years. Yeah. Like, in a year, you know, and it's not like, the, there's a reason that they're at that level and they put in 10 years of work, like it takes that long. Um, so just kind of like keeping that in the back of your mind. And then one other thing is, I used to think that I wasn't a runner uh, until 10th grade I decided I'm gonna join cross country. And then I, you know, started running more like long distance and stuff. Like before that I was like running, you know, I'll sprint 
that's all, like anything over 100 meters, I'm like, nope, I'm good. Uh, hated the mile tests in gym class, but I still did them anyway. Uh, so like, it's just, it's really funny how you can like attach yourself to this idea of like, oh, I'm not a runner. And then all of a sudden do it and I'm like, oh, well, I am a runner. Like, you know, people are saying like, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not a fit person or I'm not a healthy person. Like Austin talks about this all the time. Like they attach with this identity and then like all of a sudden they start proving themselves wrong and they're like, oh, like I am a fit and healthy person. Like I do these things and I am strong and I am capable and it's really cool to see that. I think the biggest lesson I've learned is that there are so many different types of exercise and none of them are right or wrong. Like if you are moving and if you are exercising, you are doing something right. Um, I feel like I've tried pretty much every single type of different exercise that there is, every um, just different form. Um, and I'm thankful that I have because I've kind of gotten to see, you know, how my body responds in each certain stage. Um, I've got to find out like what I enjoy because I think that is what's most important. Um, if you like running, then add running into your workouts. If you like lifting heavy, add lifting heavy into your workouts. You have to try everything. Um, you know, I used to do, when I first started working out, I would follow like workout videos at home because I didn't want to go to a gym um, and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I'm thankful for those videos because they did teach me a lot. Um, they were more cardio based. Um, so then when I started going to the gym, I started lifting heavier and then got more into like that bodybuilding style, um, which I enjoyed. I enjoyed every single phase of my journey. Um, but then when I came here, obviously these people do CrossFit and I swore that I would never do it. But Bethany talked me into doing a couple of Metcons and then I got into doing the CrossFit and I liked it because it seemed like it was everything that I had done in the past combined into one. Like I got to lift heavy, I got to do cardio, I started running a little bit, which I hadn't done in forever, not a ton. Um, but you know, I think it was just cool to, it's cool that there are so many different forms and you can kind of find your niche and find what you enjoy and just do that and try new things. Like there's no one size fits all, like everybody can try whatever. Um, one negative thing that I used to do that I don't do now is, you know, if I would miss a workout one day, the next day I would do two workouts. Like, for example, when I was following workout videos at home, if I missed one, if I was doing a program and I missed one, the next day I would make sure that I did two. And I wouldn't allow myself just time to recover and rest, which is, I learned is so, so, so important. Your body needs rest and recovery to build muscle. Um, so that is one negative thing that I did. Um, speaking of squatting below parallel, I didn't do that until I came here either. Um, where I used to work out at in Saginaw, everybody just seemed to squat like two parallel, which I thought was like what you're supposed to do. And then when I came here, it was very, very, very humbling to have to take the weight off, get my form perfected, squat, learn how to squat below parallel, and then slowly add weight back on. So, yeah. <laughs> the, the Squatting below parallel thing is something that I really didn't do until here too. So it's funny that we all kind of share that. But it's it's a great thing to yeah. squat below parallel. You're gonna get more. Um, you're gonna get a lot more out of the squat when you're going deeper. You're gonna get more calf activation and just a overall better experience as far as like adding new muscle to yourself. So that's a that's funny that we all share that. But similar to Kaylin, I feel like I've tried uh, pretty much like every single training regimen or routine that there is. Uh, obviously I haven't, but it felt like that for a while, just like going and online and finding different ones and then doing that for a couple months and then switching it when I got bored with it, um, which is something that I still kind of do. I, I like to switch it up uh, every now and then. And then I always come back to my core exercises, which I started in junior high. Uh, me and my cousin DJ, we used to live together we were about the same age, about the, the same strength. And I remember us being so pumped when we finally got 135 on bench. It was like the best day of our lives. Um, and then I lifted through high school, mostly for, for sports like football and basketball and baseball, just to, to keep some strength and you know not uh, fall behind competition pretty much is the reason I felt like I did it. And then after high school, I took like a year and didn't do anything along the lines of like much physical activity, and I saw how detrimental that was for my mental health, 
and just for overall just happiness and, and well-being. And so I, it was about December of 2019, I got back into working out consistently. I started, I, I was living in Sterling Heights, so I was going to a Planet Fitness down there. And you know, you can get a good workout there, but I also, I didn't realize how much I, I missed like just the freestanding barbell and, and just a kind of my typical weight room uh, shenanigans. So I, I got back into it, I got hungry for it, and now I've tried like the, the Arnold split and the body split routine where you do you know certain body parts on certain days like six or seven days out of the week. Uh, I've tried like a, a, a strong split where you do like more like a five by five. And that's probably the one thing that's changed most uh, in my fitness journey is not sticking in the same rep range. I used to always lift like kind of how ben Bethany mentioned not going like over eight reps. I used to always be around like eight to 12 reps too, um, which is I think like a basic thing that a lot of people learn. It's definitely where I start most clients out. Um, but I think to see change over time and not hit plateau so hard is to change that uh, the regimen by changing the rep, the rep and set scheme a little bit. So that's probably the one thing that's changed the most is I'm not confined to one rep scheme. I like to go in and out of all the different ones is one thing that I like about CrossFit is that you guys like, you'll do like an eight to 12 like accessory lift and then you'll do like, you know, like three three reps of a, of a heavy compound lift, which I think is great like to be able to mix it up. Um, so looking forward and seeing where I'm at now, I value uh, staying strong and flexible and just moving more. So I try to still just do a little bit of low intensity cardio, like walking, and I, I'm not a, opposed to running or biking. I like to just try to incorporate everything instead of uh, kind of how you said, like about building that identity around one thing, which I think is kind of detrimental to most people because you're you're gonna eventually plateau and it's gonna be a really hard plateau if you never kind of switch it up. Yeah, speaking of that, I think that's why we like doing the CrossFit method a lot is because it, it's constantly varied. So within CrossFit methodology, it's always something different. So you're not just doing heavy lifts, you're not just doing um, like cardio, you're, you're blending it all together and that's what uh, makes it a lot of fun. So speaking of, you know, ending with CrossFit, when I started out, um, I was probably 16 or so in high school. I never worked out prior to that. Um, and I played hockey, I played a little bit of basketball in like middle school and stuff, but I didn't lift for any specific sport necessarily. Uh, I just started because a couple of my buddies started working at the gym and I wanted to kind of feel better about myself. I hit a really big growth spurt, so I was like 6'1 and I was like 140 pounds, so I was like a twig. Um, and I wanted to just kind of get stronger. So I started working out and it was your typical high school workout, like all bench press, uh, probably three, four days a week with some curls and some shoulders and triceps thrown in there. And then maybe once or twice a month, we did some squats and legs. <laughs> so that's how my kind of journey started. But even just doing that, like I noticed a lot of progress and I gained a lot of confidence in myself and I just kind of fell in love with it. Um, so when I went to college, I started getting obviously more into it, um, mostly bodybuilding. So it was your traditional like split, like Austin mentioned, it was like, chest and back on Monday, go in and do some shoulders on Tuesday, and then biceps and triceps, and then legs, and then repeat. Um, so it was mostly built around a bodybuilding for years. So probably from when I was 18 until um, probably 23-ish, so about five years, I did pretty much just bodybuilding. Um, when I started here, which would have been six and a half years ago now, I me and a couple of buddies started doing more powerlifting. Um, I had a back injury in college, so I didn't do a ton of squats and deadlifts, even though I really wanted to. Uh, I loved lifting heavy. It was just mostly that eight to 12 rep range um, with some like heavy bench sets and stuff like that. And I was pretty decently strong. It was just, I had that back injury. So once I overcame that, I got into powerlifting. So it was squat, uh, squat bench deadlift a lot, um, really heavy stuff for the main lifts and then still doing bodybuilding. And then our friend that we did some powerlifting with did CrossFit, and he would talk us into doing a Metcon at the end of our lifting. 
And so maybe once a week we would do a Metcon, which is, if, in case you don't know, it's basically like a hit circuit. Um, you pick a few different exercises for a certain number of reps or for time, something like that, and you do it basically as fast as you can or for high intensity. Um, so that was our only means of cardio. Uh, before that, I never did any cardio. My cardio was supersets which is two exercises paired together. So for example, my, the extent of my cardio was like five reps on bench plus eight pull-ups. You know, that was so superset, rest for a minute or two after that. Um, that was my extent of my cardio. And I was coaching clients here, having them do cardio that I couldn't even do myself. So I figured I owed it to myself to, okay, I need to try out some Metcons or some cardio myself. So I started doing them. And I kind of really liked them. They make you feel really good. You don't like it during, but they you feel really good when you were done with it. So I started looking more into the CrossFit, and I found a guy named Rich Froning, who was at the time like the fittest on earth. So I watched his documentary and really liked what I saw and was really inspired. So I went kind of 100% um, into the CrossFit, which is basically I was still doing all my heavy lifts, you were still doing the accessory bodybuilding lifts, but you were throwing in gymnastics. So pull-ups and you were doing handstands and stuff like that, and then doing your cardio at the end. So that's kind of how my journey progressed, went from bodybuilding, powerlifting, to CrossFit. Um, and now I've been doing CrossFit, I would say, for probably about four years. And um, I really, really love doing that just because I, I love the benefit. And I love being able to do a ton of stuff. And I believe if I'm going to make my clients do it, I need to be able to do it as well. So we tend to try out everything we do before we make our clients do it. So if you're watching this, you know, and you die from one of our workouts, just know that we probably already did that. So we're, we're not just punishing you guys. We're punishing ourselves first. Um, so I will say that. But something that I never, ever did was like a really good warm-up. So I, my warm-up would be like, okay, if it's bench press day, it was 135 for a few reps. Was that was the warm up, and then it's like jumping right into your sets. So you walk into the gym, throw a plate on the bar, and that was the warm up for pretty much everything. So I think since then I've definitely learned to stretch out and warm up a lot better. Um, I also never used to cool down or stretch after either. So that's something that um, I definitely started doing a lot more of. Uh, just to avoid injury, you know, have, coming off of back injury, I needed to do that stuff. Plus, we're doing so many different things now um, between the gymnastics, the strength, the power, the Olympic lifts, which we never did. Um, you need to be really warm, and I had terrible mobility, so that was another reason. You have to build that mobility up. So, um, I think the biggest change for me, other than just getting a lot more fit. Cardio-wise, I'm um, still just as strong, if not stronger, but I can do a lot more cardio, and my mobility and flexibility is 10 times better than it was. Um, those have been the biggest changes for me over the years, I would say, with my training. Um, another big thing is, like, I used to never train off percentages. So we have a lot of our clients, um, there's a, the chalkboard behind us with our the one rep max lifts. And so once you establish kind of what your maxes are, all your sets and reps on all your lifting is based off a percentage. So for example, I also mentioned like a five by five strength lift. You know, you might do five to five on your squat, bench, and deadlift at 70 or 75% of your one rep max. So you kind of know what weight to use. I never did that before. It was pretty much walk in and build up to as heavy as you can do every single time um, and just or shoot for a certain number of reps and basically go to failure. And you don't necessarily want to go to failure every single lift, every single day. It can kind of just be detrimental to the muscle and it might not repair as fast as you would like. So that was something else that we started doing a lot more of. And that's actually more recently when we started following a CrossFit program, probably just two or three years ago, really focusing on the percentages that we were doing. That's one thing that I never used to do either was like, I never followed an actual program. Like, I mean, you probably follow like, okay, do three sets of eight of this exercise or whatever. I just kind of like wrote my own workouts, but like I never put anything that I didn't like in there. So do it, that's one thing that's changed. Like there'll be stuff in here that I'm like, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. Like burpees, ugh. Yeah. but like it's part of the program. So you do it. Yeah. And like, you don't have to think about it as much when you have the percentages. You're like, all right, this is my percentage. I just have to do it. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to think, oh, how heavy do I go today? And you can kind of like, 
leave that part of the equation out of it. Um, I also think that you get better results that way because it's periodized and structured out. Whereas, like, if you're just kind of going off of how you feel on certain days, or you're like, I don't know, I'll build up to this weight today, and then you're just not going to get, unless you're a complete beginner, you're probably not going to get continued results over time. So I think that's a big thing. Uh, I also used to think that if I didn't get sore, like wrecked from workouts, that it wasn't as effective. Um, that was when I first started out like softball training, like two, three days a week. I was like, workouts aren't hard enough. So I went home and I actually, it's funny because I started off doing softball and like training for like performance. And I did train upper body then. And like, I wanted to get a bigger bench. It's funny, ironic. And like, and then I went to college and it was just, it went to purely physical because I didn't have like a sport to train for. And like, I kind of missed that, but like I didn't have any specific sport goals or anything I could compete in. So I just did like workouts just to look better, I guess. And then that's where I came into like, well, I'm not really gonna do anything upper body focused because all I want to do is grow my legs. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll compete in powerlifting because I, I miss competing in something. And that's when I started squatting bowl parallel and I was like oh, this isn't as good and then I started benching again and doing more upper body uh, and then I came here and then I was like oh CrossFit and like you can compete in that every year so that's kind of it's like it's the competitive part of it that probably made me fall in love with it um, also another thing is like I went away from training with people and I trained by myself for like a good amount of time and I thought that that's like what I liked is like just training by myself like getting into the gym and like now with Metcons especially, it's so much harder if you don't have a partner. I'm sorry, whatever anyone tells you, like if you like if I work out and Caitlin's not there or Taylor or someone, like just the voices in your head just get a little too loud sometimes. And you're just like, oh. like I have five five rounds to do and I'm at round two and I'm already dying. And it's like, oh no. <laughs> so it just helps to have someone else there to like help push you and just know that they're going through that same thing. And like kind of how you said with like the clients, like we do the workout and then we make them do something kind of like that. So that's, people know I have a devilish grin sometimes when I make them do a hard workout and they point it out and that's because I've done a workout similar and I know how it feels <laughs> and I'm like, ah, yes, I know how that feels. And I don't know, I just, I get a little satisfaction out of it because I know I feel so good after I'm done with it and I know that they're gonna feel good after they've done it and they're gonna feel accomplished because I know that they're pushing themselves really hard um, and that's where you get a lot of like those endorphins and you just, you feel really proud of yourself afterwards. Should I go to nutrition? Sure. So we'll transition to <laughs> nutrition now, how that's kind of changed over the years. Yeah, so when I first started working out, I definitely under eight. Um, I just didn't really know. I, I was one of those people who thought carbs were bad. Like I knew I needed carbs, but like only a small amount. Um, I know I didn't eat enough protein. I really just didn't eat enough calories overall. Um, and it was because I was trying to like lose a little bit of weight. I didn't need to lose a lot of weight. Um, I more just needed to build muscle, but in my head, like I was coming off the freshman 15 in college and just wanted to like lose that. Um, so I definitely like under eight, I didn't go out and enjoy myself with friends, um, kind of like just would stay back. Or if I did go out, I would like not eat during the day before going out because I wanted to save all of my calories um, until then. Um, but then once I started going to, I switched my major a ton in college and I finally ended up getting a bachelor's in exercise science. So I had some nutrition courses and that is when I learned uh, we need food. Like Taylor uses the analogy all the time, but like our bodies are a car and food is our fuel that keeps us going. Um, and that's basically what I learned in college and I learned like how much protein you actually need if you're working out every day, how many carbs you need. Oh, fats are good for you too. Mm -hmm. um, just And once I realized that, I started eating more and actually seeing better results, um, which was really, really cool that I could eat more. Um, but then, fast forward a little bit later, almost two years ago, I got diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, which was pretty much based on foods, triggering my body to inflame and flare up. Um, so coming off of that was really difficult because I basically had to cut out like everything to see what caused my body to flare. And so I, again, went back to not eating enough 
and kind of being scared of food because I was scared I was going to get sick and end up in the hospital again. So that, I mean, that is still kind of a work in progress. I have pretty much figured out what triggers my body, but for a long time I wasn't eating enough. I think when I started working here, I still wasn't eating enough um, because I still was just really scared of a lot of food and just didn't want to get sick. Um, but once I started working out here and, you know, kind of working closely along these people and just being reminded of how much our body does need food to function, especially if we're working out as hard as we are, um, I started kind of branching out more, eating a little bit more, and again, had better results, started putting on more muscle, lost a little bit of body fat actually, which I didn't really need to, but I just a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just feel like my nutrition has been an up and down hills, um, but overall, like your body needs food, you need carbs, you need fats. I hate when people come to me and say they're doing keto because your body needs carbs for fuel. That is your main source of energy. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, Bethany and Kayla both just mentioned two things that I think are really super important important for any fitness journey and uh, what Bethany said was without programming you're pretty much going to fall back into the same routine or the same exercises that you enjoy you're going to come in and do those like every time without following a program or you know following something it doesn't always have to be like a program you bought you can find a lot of good information online for free uh, so I think that's super important then Caitlin mentioned um, how it was better for her, at least for the way she looked and felt when she started to eat a little more. I think that's a big problem that I see with women mostly. It happens to men too, uh, where they're trying to lose weight and trying to look skinnier. So they're trying to eat less and move more, which in my opinion is probably a, a recipe for failure for most people because you're, you're, you're not gonna get the results that you want. Sometimes you have to eat a little more. And I think that's a, a great point that you brought up. Um, I wanted to talk about where I started nutrition wise and I mentioned to these guys before we started uh, I knew that protein was important so I knew I had heard that um, through the grapevine I guess that protein was important um, and I used to drink uh, it was a breakfast carnation high protein it had like I think like 10 grams of protein in a packet and fair life high protein milk and I used to mix that after a workout because I knew it was pretty good to get protein in after a workout. And now, like looking back, I can laugh at myself because that, that's totally funny that I thought that like, that was a good uh, <laughs> shake after a workout. Not that a shake is, a, is bad, but I've learned so much uh, in the last few years, especially about the importance of whole foods, um, the, the role that that has in our, uh, in our microbiome, in our gut and uh, the hormones that it affects. So I've really started a journey on trying to find new foods and I even have clients like, uh, I had a client yesterday, she brought me in some kumquats. I've never had that before. That was a new fruit I've tried. So now it's just like this journey of finding new foods I like. I used to think I was this picky eater and now I, I've expanded my palate to, to foods and, and things that I don't think I would have ever tried three or four years ago. So that's it's super fun to, to start that journey too. The fitness journey is one beast in itself and then the nutrition is another one. Um, I think a lot of people could see way better results if they put a little more focus on the nutrition rather than the training. You know, uh, training for most people it seems like it comes kind of easy, like they can do good workouts, they, they can get to classes. Um, but the, the nutrition is harder because we're not there by you or there's not somebody that's an expert in it by you, like your side the whole time. You have to kind of know your triggers and, and learning that for myself was big. Like when I wanted junk food and when I wanted good food, like what was the difference in, in how I was feeling mentally. Um, and then just kind of the snowball effect of, of eating better, how it led to so many different things. I feel like I, I'm a, a happier person. I feel like I can, you know, give more. I have more energy to give to people. So just like you said about how food is fuel, like our body is a is pretty much like a car. It's a great way to, a great analogy to think about um, because 
without that fuel, we're running on E all the time and that's not good. So just trying to find new foods, uh, I would suggest, especially for if you're somebody that's new, just start by adding in a couple whole foods here and there. I don't like the idea of taking out a bunch of things from your diet. I like the idea of adding in good things to your diet and those are eventually gonna replace the bad food. So that's kind of how I've thought about it. And I continue to try and get better. I know we all probably do. Uh, we're not perfect. We're never gonna be perfect, but our goal is to just keep getting a little bit better and a little bit more tuned in as far as the nutrition goes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my nutrition journey, I guess, started kind of similar to Austin. Like when I started working out, I knew that um, getting more protein was important. More protein helps build muscle, so it's how much protein am I eating or how can I eat more? So I would just track how much protein I ate on everything that I was eating in high school. So if you can picture a high school kid, um, it was like cereal and pizza rolls and stuff like that. And I was tracking the protein on it and thinking, I was like, oh yeah, I'm getting enough protein while well, I was eating a bunch of garbage. Um, but when I got to college, I kind of learned a lot more about uh, healthy nutrition. And that was basically through just learning from people that were doing what I wanted to do, which was bodybuilding. So I knew I needed to eat a lot more like chicken, broccoli, rice. So that was pretty much the staple of two of my meals every single day. Um, I also did like a ton of um, uh, oatmeal and eggs and things like that. Um, I did it every single day at work. I would just make a big old thing of just rice that was flavored, eat that at work, as well as oats and uh, protein powder. So oats and protein and peanut butter. Just It went from getting how much protein can I get to just maximizing calorie intake. So it was like how, how much calories can I get out of everything that I'm eating. So a ton of rice and potatoes and oats and obviously protein powders and I did all the mass gainers. I worked at GNC for three and a half years so I was taking every supplement you could take to try to just get as big as I could as a, as a bodybuilder or men's physique. So that was kind of like how it started out. But I will say, I think compared to the average college kid, it was probably a lot healthier. Um, I was eating a lot of chicken, a lot of, you know, a good amount of vegetables. I had broccoli or asparagus with every dinner at least. Um, getting kind of more whole foods. But it was just a ton of calories, four or 5,000 calories a day. Um, the only downfall for me, other you know, with the eating was I was in college and you know, had four roommates, my best friends, so we drank quite a bit. So um, I'd say my nutrition wasn't very good in that aspect. Um, you know, we just liked having a good time, which I think everybody does in college at some point. So when I moved back home and started as a personal trainer here, um, obviously that was pretty much cut out because I was just working here. Um, but actually my nutrition went a little bit in the opposite direction because my schedule completely changed. It went from, you know, just going to a couple classes in college and working, you know, a six hour shift at GNC to like being here for 12 hours some days. So I ate a ton of like granola bars and uh, they weren't terrible, like protein bars and things like that, but I wasn't making enough whole like actual meals. So it took me a long time to learn and develop the regimen to actually meal prep, um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, wake up a little bit earlier, start making breakfast, things like that. Um, so that was definitely a big turning point for me was um, learning how to implement healthy foods given no matter what your circumstances are. So a lot of people make the excuse they don't have the time to make breakfast or they don't have time to eat lunch or my kids eat it, you know, they won't eat healthy food for dinner. It's, you got to overcome those um, kind of obstacles that you run into. Like my schedule completely flip-flopped and it just took me a little while to adjust, but I was able to adjust to it. Um, I will say nutrition, you know, like Austin kind of nailed it. I had like the, the workouts come pretty naturally. Um, if you just commit to coming to the gym, you're going to get that routine down. And it's fairly easy to do um, after just a short time of doing it. But nutrition is something that we are constantly experimenting with and changing. I mean, my nutrition plan has changed so much over the years. Uh, I definitely now think that I've done a really good job at adding in a lot more nutrients. So a lot more vegetables, a lot more fruits. I don't just worry about how much protein I'm getting. Um, you know, I used to 
do like so many protein shakes right after the workout, like Austin mentioned. Thought that that was the most important thing. I don't even do a protein shake after a workout all the time anymore. I, I'm worried more about like carbohydrates and electrolytes and stuff because we are working out for two hours most of the time, pretty much nonstop. So we need to replenish. And I worry about water intake a lot more, things like that. So I think it's just kind of learning through trial and error. You need to try new things out, kind of figure out what works for you. Um, and I still have the chicken broccoli rice most of the time, um, but it's not just built around the bodybuilding diet. You know, I'm playing around with things that work for me. I found out that I was lactose intolerant when I was like 24. So for my whole entire life, I was drinking milk and taking whey protein and doing all these shakes and it was tearing my gut apart. I've always had gut issues, so that's something else I learned. So now I focus a lot on digestion, so I cut out most gluten and most lactose. Um, and now I just feel a lot better and I'm fueled a lot better. Um, I still have snacks, but they're just better snacks. These guys will see me every single day, I'll have some nuts, a banana. The worst food I think I eat all day is an RX bar, um, which isn't great for you, but like I said, it's the worst thing. It's just some quick calories. Um, there's only four ingredients, so at least it's not terrible. Um, but other than that, I'll try to you know, prep your, your egg wraps and all that stuff. So bottom line is I think for anybody out there, just start somewhere like Austin said. Like I started just learn from somebody that's doing what you want to do. Like, hey, I want to be a bodybuilder, so I'm going to eat what they were eating. Chicken, broccoli, rice, ton of calories. That at least got me started. And then I continue learning as I go. Um, and that's kind of the whole point of these videos is we've done this stuff through trial and error. So we're just relaying that information to you guys so that you don't have to spend so many years trialing and testing it. You can kind of get the data um, ahead of time. Yeah, get a jump start. Kind of know what to do. Yeah, jump start you guys a little bit. Um, so I 100% agree with what Austin said. Start adding things in. You know, add in a couple servings of fruit and vegetables. Start drinking more water. Start there. And then you, as you kind of start getting better at eating whole foods or more um, better options, then you can cut back on the worst stuff. So 100% agree with that. Um, but I've always been a firm believer in getting enough calories in. I think that's because I started out so small um, and I've always struggled with maintaining and building muscle. But for those of you that are trying to go the other way and lose body fat, you still need to eat enough. Um, you, you want to be in a deficit, but you can't starve yourself because you're going to go backwards. You're going to lose muscle and your metabolism is going to slow down and you're not going to feel energized. You're basically going to hit a wall and you're going to feel like crap all day. So um, those are my biggest tips. That's kind of, kind of my little journey. Yeah, for me, for nutrition, uh, when I started out, it was even before, like I look back at some of the mistakes I made where like before my cross country meets, we would always run, it was like 9 a.m. we would start our race. And like we'd have to get up at like six or seven to get on the bus and then drive there and warm up and everything. I never ate before my races, mistake number one. Um, never, I don't think I really took many snacks to eat after, I mean like some. But like your body needs fuel after going all night without eating and then like wake up and I didn't eat because I used to sometimes I dry heave after my races so I never wanted to like throw up. Um, so that also wasn't good. But that's maybe part of the reason because I didn't have anything in my stomach that my body was just like doesn't know what to do. Uh, so I should have at least had like some sort of like carbs like toast and you know whatever and a banana or something little. Um, but uh, obviously hindsight 2020. Um, then I started getting into nutrition and then realizing like, oh, this is what's in food. Um, I didn't really like track anything starting out too much until like my senior year. And then I like started getting into like, oh, protein, that's what you gotta do to build muscle and get stronger. So it's like, all right, one gram per pound of body weight. Okay, let me get the protein powder and I'm gonna put this in my shakes and everything. And I made like, this smoothie, it had like 70 grams of protein in it. It was like, I had like a cup of Greek Oikos yogurt, I had a scoop of protein powder, what else I put in there? Like the protein Kodiak oatmeal, um, the Fair Life protein, like it was, I don't, it had like 700 calories in it, I swear. But it was like chock full of protein. I was like, yes, this is what's gonna make me like build muscle. And uh, I mean, it probably helped a little bit, but um, it was just, it was, Looking back, it's just like, oh, I didn't even account for anything else that was going into it, too. Um, and then, like, after
after that, you know, I started reading more books and like getting into nutrition a little bit more. Decided to major in nutrition uh, when I went to MSC in the fall and majored in that for about a year. Then got sent home with COVID. Um, I kind of started getting more into like the other aspects of nutrition from there, just like learning more over the summer and then like obviously going into the classes. Uh, their approaching recommendations for the beginner, like intro to nutrition class, is a lot different than what I was doing. I was like, everyone says one pound, like one gram per pound of body weight. They're saying like, I only need like 60 grams a day. I'm like, this is not right. Like, I, I'm like, S there's too big of a discrepancy here, which there's a lot of like different variables, um, especially if like someone's working out more. Um, I mean, I guess you don't necessarily need a gram per pound of body weight, but at least per pound of like lean body mass, which is like your weight besides the fat. Um, so something around there is usually fine. Uh, so I definitely used to overemphasize protein. Um, I also like got to a point where like I thought carbs were like not good for me. Uh, so like I remember eating meals of like it was salmon and broccoli, or like I would like just not have any like carb source at a certain meal. Um, so I took a quiz of like my body type, and I'm like, oh, I'm an endomorph, so I don't process carbs. And it's like, so I need more protein and no carbs and fats. And I'm like, okay. Uh, I guess that's what I have to do is just do that to lose weight. And it's like, no, you don't. <laughs> and now, like looking back, I'm just like, oh, oh, just the mistakes you make when you're when you just start out. It's just it's kind of funny to look back because like today my breakfast was a bagel, uh, two slices of bacon, two eggs, which a lot of the food that kind of like had a, the mentality of that it was bad for me, like white bread bagel. Uh, too many carbs, and then like bacon was like bad for you, and then eggs, I don't like do like egg whites because there's too many fats in it, um, and I put avocado and tomato on there, and like, and cheese, that was another one, and like, yeah, it was a lot of calories, but I'm not going to burn it because I'm going to work out in an hour, and I need that energy to work out, um, so like, just kind of like looking back and understanding that there aren't like necessarily good and bad foods, but knowing how to balance them, I think that was one thing. That's one thing that's like I've kind of learned more through here of like not thinking certain food is bad or certain food is good. It's just like what foods, okay, like you can have all the foods, um, just make sure that you're getting your nutrients from good sources most of the time. But like it's okay to have ice cream occasionally or you know if that's, if that's your thing or if you do you want to go out and get burgers and fries once a week or something like that. Like, as long as the rest of the time and you're eating good quality meals, you're getting enough protein, you're getting enough food, uh, that's honestly like the bottom line. Like I used to focus so much on the small part, like the 10% of like whatever's gonna get you 10% of your results, but it's like 90% of my focus was going was like, oh, is it like this little thing here that I'm not, or this supplement is it's gonna be this, or is it, you know, a certain rep range that I'm not doing, or you know, all those clickbait YouTube videos that they have out there that's like the one thing that's holding you back from your <laughs> fitness or whatever. Uh, you know, used to focus on that a little too much once I got into it. And then just like realizing over time that it's just, it's just consistency with the basics. Like that's where most of it's gonna come from. Like the other stuff, it can help, but that's most of the focus needs to go on just like the basics of like, all right, get your solid nutrition in, be consistent with your workouts, um, just making sure that you're not focusing too much on like the minor things versus like the bigger things that are going to lead to whatever results you want. Um, I also used to not eat it enough um, at a certain point where like for uh, performance anyways, it just wasn't, wasn't enough. I thought like I was eating enough carbs, but like not too much. And uh, since learning that, like just knowing it's okay if you like even like sometimes gaining weight on the scale is really intimidating for girls um, guys it depends but typically like you know they're like oh i need to be bigger i need to be heavier and uh girls kind of struggle with that and it's not like the number on the scale is not like define how you look or what you're able to do in the gym and just knowing that like it's going to set you up long term like you don't have to keep going down in weight like it's okay if you're just like getting healthier at your same weight you don't have to continuously lose weight you can take time off to like maybe i'm just gonna hang out here for a while get really strong focus on my diet and then like you don't have to keep getting
getting just smaller and smaller. That's one thing, that's what trap that I kind of fell into uh, a long time ago. And that, uh, it just didn't end up really well because I was just eating way too little. Um, and now that you start eating more, you realize how much better you feel and how much better energy and mood you have. Um, so that's one thing that like really has changed for me. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to something that you said about like unhealthy food and healthy food. I like to say, you know, you could eat one broccoli, you're not going to get healthy. You could have one Oreo, you're not going to be unhealthy. So it all depends on how much you're having. You know, if you're eating a box of Oreos, yeah, that's unhealthy. And if you eat a ton of broccoli every single day, you're probably going to get healthier. So it's all about the amount that you're having. Um, so just finding balance with that is definitely going to be important. But if you guys, if we kind of recap every single thing that we've talked about, um, we've talked about like the mistakes or failures that we've made and what we've learned over the years. And the biggest takeaway that you guys need to understand is that we tried a bunch of things. And we failed at a lot of things, but we didn't start from scratch because we kind of had an idea of what not to do. So we learned from mistakes or failures, and we took that knowledge and kept progressing on it. So my suggestion to anybody watching this is you need to start somewhere with your fitness and nutrition. Try to learn as much as you can. That's what we're here to try to do is educate people. We've gone through a couple of you know, a few years, I'm sure there's 20 years between the four of us, of trialing and error our nutrition and our fitness. And we want to try to give you that jump start, like I mentioned earlier. Um, but the biggest thing is, is you need to continue learning and continue adapting um, and trying new things. That's definitely one of the most important things. Um, you also want to be just consistent. Uh, I like that you said, I think it was Bethany that said that you need to be just consistent with the basics. You know, eat some whole foods consistently and consistently work out three, four days a week, maybe more, and you're going to have a really good baseline. Once you can do that uh, for an extended period of time, then try new things and use that 10%. You know, experiment with other nutrition methods or training methods or supplements or something like that. Um, and I think that's what kind of we've learned um, mostly over the years is um, going, thinking back and thinking like supplements were the most important thing and you gotta take all the creatine and pre-workout and protein. Um, that's what's gonna give you results. You know, I had buddies that would run out of protein and they wouldn't go to the gym because they didn't have protein for after their workout. I'm like, yeah, that's not a reason not to go work out just because you don't have protein powder. So it's just like constantly learning and understanding what's actually gonna get you the best results. And the best results is just gonna come from the basics, you know. Start adding in some whole foods and start moving your body, um, you know, on a consistent basis. And, Never stop learning and never stop progressing um, is the biggest things. And if you took anything away from this, is we've talked about everything that we've learned from and what we've constantly kind of changed or progressed over the years. And I would say we still don't know hardly anything. Um, yeah. The biggest mistake you can make is thinking that you know it all. So uh, one of my mentors told me that he was just smart enough to know that he didn't know anything. And I truly believe that. And that kind of keeps you in the mindset of wanting to learn new things. I'll listen to anybody and what they have to say about anything because you never know when you can learn something new. So don't think that you could do, you know, we have a challenge coming up. People are going to learn some great habits. But don't do that challenge and think that you learned everything you could possibly learn and get maximum results for the next 10 years. It's going to take constant practice and you're constantly going to have to be learning. So, I think that pretty much wraps up this episode. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Hopefully this helps kind of give you an idea of where we started. And you don't have to be perfect. We obviously made a ton of mistakes early on. Um, we didn't eat the best. We maybe didn't know what we were doing for training. And just know that that's a part of the cycle. Just because you're looking at us and we eat healthy and train um, really optimally now, it took years of practice and learning. And we went to college for this stuff. And we learn from experts. We follow them. That's another big tip I would have is follow people that you want to be like. If there's a certain person that inspires you, like seek out more people like that and learn from them. That's the biggest thing. Um, there's a great book called Who Not How. 
Don't try to figure out how you can do it yourself 100% of the time. Find somebody that's already done it. So find that who that is gonna help you actually accomplish it. And that's what we're here for. We're the who's that can help you get results. So who's down um, the bill? Yeah, we're sure. <laughs> so that, that caps off this episode. Make sure you like and subscribe. And we're coming up on one year, so we're super excited. Go back and watch our old episodes. Um, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Stay healthy. Bye.